they were good. And Ed was great. He looked good. He always looks good. Okay. Celeste. Hi, guys. Are you in New York, Celeste? So fun. I am. How did you get our PR background, Celeste? How did you do that? <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, it was took me forever. I had to screenshot it from yeah. our website, and then I, like, because I'm the host on Pro, so I get like virtual backgrounds. I'm super fancy. Oh, wow. virtual backgrounds. I love it. It's super cool. <laughs> Patty, yeah, so it's like my business. <laughs> Maddie, you need to do Jamaica background. I know, right? I guess I got to upgrade my Zoom. <laughs> hey, Celeste, meet Jason. Hi, Celeste. Hi, Jason. How's it going? It's going well. We're doing well. I'm doing well here at the store. Yeah. Good. It's That's been awesome. So awesome. We like, we had a five thousand dollar day the other day. We had twelve hundred yesterday. It's just like, yeah, I love it. So all, all Barton Pereira, right? Too. Telling lots of Bartons. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So great. Do you know when I'm You're Bill? You, do you know I met you eight years ago? Where, um, where were we? A trade show or? No, I was living in. Um, I moved from LA. Okay. From, uh, Orange County and stuff, and so um, we were. Do you remember Curious Palette? The I coffee didn't. shop, it's on, it, it's changed to something else. It was in Mar Vista. No. <laughs> yeah. No? I'm Do you? Daddy knows. It's, uh, and you gave me your card. I was wearing an Oliver Peoples. You're like, here, I'm Bill from Barton. Here, here's my card. It was in a coffee shop. So. Oh, cool. What cool. were you doing in Mar Vista, Bill? <laughs> What's that? I said to Bill, what were you doing in Mar Vista? That's my hood. Uh, <laughs> I'm only going to see you. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I'm gonna step away just to open my door because it's a little hot in here. <laughs> don't, don't okay. Somebody there that fans you? Tell friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the big fan. Yeah. Hey, Joe D, how's the greens looking? You got them rolling nice? So, so tight. <laughs> so tight. It's but it's. I get so tired. You know, I'm, I'm back home by 8 a.m. And today was a beautiful sunset, but I kind of like go, wow, I don't think I've gotten up that early, that consistently <laughs> for a long time. Unless I was going, you know, fishing or something, right? I Wait, like what it. are you doing? I'm confused. Oh, I'm mowing golf. I'm a green <laughs> Caddy, Caddyshack. Caddyshack. I am totally. I'm yeah. like, what? Yeah, it's unbelievable. You should see me. I like mow the straightest line on my mower. Wow. It's nice. incredible. Yep. I like it. Have you gotten out and played on it yet? I have. It's really good. Nice. Yeah. The course is good. My game needs some work, but <laughs> it's all right. It's been really good. Let me just text Jack real quick. He's probably, okay. is he, is somebody, Firing up a Zoom for him? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> when I logged in, it tried to do this download thing. Like, That's I don't what, know. Yeah. An upgrade oh. forever, and it kind of slowed me down. Yeah. Oh. But I, like, tried to get out of it really quick, because I didn't know how long that was going to take. How long do these yeah. Zooms go? Like, does it just keep recording, or how, how does it, it work? It just keeps going. I mean, oh, you can okay. go as long as you want. You can, if you're going to use them for, like, your website or something, you can edit them. You can, yeah. you can go through and kind of do a lot of stuff with it. That's what, when we did that black optical one, I don't know yeah. if you saw it. They, they edit it for their website. They don't do the whole thing. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So it's interesting. Yeah, I watched the black optical one. That was nice. And uh, so. Cool. The vision. What was the other one? The vision. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, re the REM guy? Yeah, the REM yeah. guy. That yeah. Was, wow. Yeah. That was the a little council. different. Yeah. Oh, he's, yeah, I hadn't met him before. <laughs> he's, he's uh, yeah, he reminds me of a character. <laughs> yeah, I so think he was really good keeping it going. Yeah. You no, know, it wasn't that fun of a topic to talk about. Was it Mike? What? Was it Mike, the original uh -huh. owner? Of yes, yes. In fact, yeah, he's Mike. In regards. And he says that he now, he lives in Snowmass, I think. Yeah, he, says he skis that, all the time. He's a massive. Yeah, his, his wife buys all her Barton prayers from our Aspen store now that he's out of the business. That's good girl. So, awesome. 
He, uh, when they brought out John Varvatos and he came to the store in Aspen, I was there and he's like, come on, you're going to put John Varvatos in the store. And I was like, no, I don't think that is going to happen. <laughs> I just don't see that really happening. But if you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's a very nice guy. Super nice guy. Yeah. So Celeste, are you in California? Yeah. Okay. I'm here. I've been in the office for the last week, which is good. And then I've been working at home a couple of days as well. So okay. easing back into it. But yeah, no, things are really good. It's been busy. Good. Well, kind of. Also yeah. busy by my <laughs> pool and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm not traveling anymore, which is kind of nice. Yeah. I thought I would go crazy, but it's weird how quickly you can adjust. Like now I'm like used to being at home and I can't imagine like flying around like I used right. to. Like it just, it's strange. Like how quickly the human body kind of is just like, all right, now I like being at home. Yeah. So I don't know. Big change. It's a big change. I read an article today in the LA Times, the Orange County John Wayne Airport was off 97%, 97.2%. I saw that. Wow. It's insane. That's a number. Like how it just stopped. I mean, they, I think they're from, if you go from six to 10 at night, it's an average of like 56 people an hour in the airport, that's it. Yeah. Wow, so Yesterday crazy. Yesterday I drove to Hollywood um to pick something up and the traffic was bumper to bumper it was like i mean i left oh, my house it's around back. five o'clock but it was full on it crazy i couldn't believe it i thought oh i'm gonna get there in 20 30 minutes max it took almost an hour is it true that um the um the smog is down like the it is it's down yeah yeah definitely it's clearer Oh. But it doesn't keep people from coming to Laguna Beach, I'll tell you that. No. Is it going nuts? No. <laughs> On the weekends, it's crazy. You can't drive through town. It takes you forever right now. Because it's more people right now. Yeah. I heard somebody ding. I bet that's Jack. I wonder if that's... Uh... No, it was me. I'm shutting down one of my laptops because I'm oh. worried I got too much. My Wi-Fi at home... I got the kid on Wi-Fi because she's on a Zoom call and the husband's working from home. He's on a Zoom call. So I'm like, oh God, <laughs> yeah. everyone's here. Uh, well, I guess we can just... Um, yeah, let's... far away, Jason. Yeah, so um, it's such an... Uh, first, I, I'm, I'm so honored um, and thankful for your time. I'm, I'm uh, Bill and Patty and Celeste to get on and for me to meet you that if it wasn't for COVID, um, and I'm not saying it's such a great thing. It's not, but it, we, maybe this wouldn't have happened, you know? Maybe we're not getting to meet as many people as we would or have the time to do so. So I'm really honored and thankful for, for you doing this, so. No, it's our pleasure, man. Yeah, so fun. And I am such an independent eyewear advocate that Barton's like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Here's Jack, hold on. Um, nice. sideways. Um, Jack, you're sideways, dude. You're sideways, dude. <laughs> there there we are. Are. Yay! I'm going. Kind of. Sorry, I was there late. The last. How you Hi. doing? Good. How you Daddy guys doing? Stuff? How you doing, Jack? Oh, just living the dream. <laughs> <Here you. laughs> I love it. Looks like oh, Patty lost, lost Patty. Uh oh. What happened? Oh, we lost Patty. So I got yeah. kicked out. Now I'm back in. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Hit your. Uh... No, I'm back, but I can't see you guys. I can't see any of you. Uh, yeah, we can't see I know, you either. I can't see you we either. can't see you either. Oh. But can you can see each other? We yeah. Can just, yeah, we can see. We just see your email address coming up. That's it. Oh. Is the, oh, there, there, you the video. there she is. You're on. Am I on? But I still yeah. can't see you guys. There you are, Batty. Do Hi. the gallery view. Oh, wait. I see Jack. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Wow, that was weird. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jack. No, we so do let's one. start. Let's start by I want to know uh, the relationship between Bill, Patty, and, and Jack. Jack Erker here. So I mean, Jack and I go back to Obstacle Shop of Aspen, Matsuda, everything back like 1990 or something. I don't know, way back. We, we go back when we had brown hair. <laughs> 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 yeah, and we could remember things. Yeah, way before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. yeah. It was the wild, wild west back then, Jason. I mean, we we liked to. It was fun. The optical business in the eighties and nineties. It was fun. It was, it was, yeah. it was it fun. Was fine. Everybody in the high end business, they were all cool and happening and having a good time and doing something different and and uh, not the same anymore. Yeah. But, no, it's changed a lot. Changed yeah. A lot. Yeah, but it was fun back in the day. <laughs> Everybody before, wore black. Yeah, before <laughs> you guys were born, unfortunately. <laughs> no, I, I love yogurt. That's all. It's just, yeah. um, so great. Um, I want to ask, um, I'm going to put, I'm sure um, Patty and uh, uh, Bill have been asked this, but what inspired you to get into eyewear? So what, you know, what, there's you know did you just go in for a job somewhere at an optical place or did you how did it work well i at the time i was dating larry sand's daughter and we were in college so and he said oh you got to come work for me and they just opened a store i was living in california and they just opened a store in newport beach so i had to go live at his house in arizona no pay and work for a month at the Borgata store and train and learn everything. So, wow. and then I moved, then we came back to Newport Beach and I was at that store. That's where I started. Well, Billy, that's that's the, cost, that's the cost of dating his daughter, you know, you work for free. I know, <laughs> I know. And then I, I was dating Fred Mannheim, who was one of the original investor owners of Oliver Peoples. Okay. Uh, when it just started, I think he paid five thousand dollars to help him finish the store on Sunset. And then when they decided to do the wholesale business, he and his father invested and put their house up as collateral with the bank to get the loan to start the Oliver People's Wholesale Company. Wow. And at that time, um, I was just helping on the weekends, actually, just putting uh, the shrink tubing on the little uh, prongs on the clips because they would come from Japan with that and they were scratching the frames the 505 506 and um so fred used to bring him home from work and at night after my day job i would like do the shrink tubing on the clips and then it just got so busy that i ended up going to work there full time but that was before i mean there wasn't even fax machines yet i mean we used to communicate with japan by telex telex Whoa. Like, yes <laughs> Yeah, wow. that, that fax machine was quite the invention in its day. Oh my gosh, that was so huge. <laughs> yeah, gosh. You read it and respond really quick because the ink would fade off that paper. Do you remember? Yeah, right. The old paper. <laughs> Patty was actually nine years old doing that, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right. let's talk about independent eyewear. Um, I've, I've always been in independent eyewear. I started in 2006 at Optical Shop of Aspen in Brentwood. Um, I walked in, got a job, worked for Larry um, until they sold out. And then I went on when they sold out to, um, I think it was Oakley, right? Oakley. First, yeah. and then that's when I left. But, but I've always been in independent eyewear. I've always been higher bo and boutiques. And I, I just, so I, I'm on that side of the stream. So um when a customer comes in the store they're like you know what what you know why is this up this certain a price but you know i'm over at this other store and you know these other brand names uh you know these mainstream stuff how do you explain the difference what would you say to that customer like uh, how you know you know what i mean well we can only really speak for for barton Pereira because i think there's some independent eyewear brands where the product may not actually be worth the price but you know, we make all of our product in Japan. 
just with the acetate we use, we use primarily Japanese acetate. It's a harder material. It has less chemicals in it. Um, it's, it's harder to work with. It takes longer to produce, you know, and manufacture yeah. plastic products like that. But the durability, the enduring length of that frame, uh, it, you know, it's really the most superior product you can buy. Can you go out and buy a plastic frame for $100? Yeah, no, no question you can. But you can't buy a Barton Pereira frame for that because it just, it, you know, we're working with factories that have been around for decades and they're real artisans at what they do. And they take a lot of pride in producing Barton Pereira. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's like, do you have to pay $15,000 for an Hermes bag? No, you don't. You know, you can go out and buy a cheap leather bag for $220. Right, but, right. You know, it's just, it's a different customer. It's a consumer that wants something that has a lasting quality and has, you know, a real value to it and, and a real artistic and uh, craft quality. And that, that's what Barton Pereira is. Um, it's, it's not that Patty or I couldn't go out and produce something and make it for $12 and, and sell it. It's just, that's not what gets us off. You know, that's no. what we're into. And, um, you know, we've, I've kind of seen both sides of it. We sold Oliver Peoples to Oakley in 2006 and, um, you know, Oakley. What's, up, guys? And, uh, What's happening? Yeah, Tony. Tony. There What's he is. <laughs> Hey, social oh, yeah. distancing. You don't want to get too close to Jack. <laughs> yeah, six feet. <laughs> Where's your mask? You know what? We've been working together so much. I think we've we've infected each other. So yeah. Oh, we, oh by the way, we both have, both have the yeah. antibodies. Yeah, we, yeah, we're we're quarantined together because we both have it. So. Oh, yeah. that's so yeah. cute. Yes. If as many times as we've been to China, I don't. I think it would be a miracle that we don't have. <laughs> you ate yeah. back in China too. <laughs> exactly. How you doing, Tony? You know, it's going. We're just trying to, you know, figure out this new nonsense. Yeah. That's all you yeah. can do. That's it. Keeps it interesting. So, what's that? So it keeps it interesting. Keeps it interesting. Yeah. You know, uh, I've been a teacher for the past couple months to my young yeah. kid. I yeah. know. No. And that's uh, the patience and teaching anything like that is, uh, it's not for me. So when the, <laughs> the next time the teachers want to raise, give it to them. They give yes. it us. Hell so, yeah. Sounds like you're doing better than me. I got fired from both my kids. <laughs> <laughs> I've slumped all mine. They got to stay another year back. <laughs> oh my God. So I bring mine to work. Yeah, right. Oh. There you yeah, go. The, the, weird th the weird thing is, you never stop teaching. I'm still teaching my couple here. Yeah. <laughs> right there, yeah. It's yeah. great love it. you guys, those smiling faces. We miss yeah. you. Yeah, because yeah. is the thing happening in Vegas this fall or no? They say it is. Yeah. yeah. I, they have, yeah. I would bet no, but who knows? Right. Yeah. yeah. They still took our money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They made us roll our money into it, so we'll see. Yeah. They yeah, didn't... I was working on New York. I don't know if you guys paid for the booth and all that kind of stuff, but you know, we we're like, don't pay at all, hold out, and, yeah. and we just never sent any money in. Well, we had paid one deposit, but then our deposit came due like March first or something. And I'm like, we're not paying. It. And she's yeah. like, Well, you might lose your space. I said yeah, there's not going to be a Vision East this year. Says, oh, yeah, yep. there's going to be. I was like, well, I don't think so. Yeah, give it, give it to whoever wants to show up. Yeah, they can take the booth. It's fine. Mm -hmm. But we've been battling over our deposit with them pretty hard. Wow. So, but we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Did they give you your deposit back or did they roll it over to? Well, that was, I was like, well, I don't even know that I want to do Vegas, right? I was like, you know, so I want my money back. <laughs> yeah, right. And they're right. like, well, the show's not canceled. It's just postponed. I go, no, it's canceled because you're not doing it until the next, you know, March, you know, so that's, you've canceled it. Yeah. Right. And we knew so that canceled. Finally, we agreed that we would get all the money back except for the smallest room in Vegas that's available. So, you know, it was like $12,000 or something. Yeah. 
Wow. So they paid for the smallest room and then they are sending us back the rest of the money. But yeah. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to do New York next year at Javits. So just oh, to really, where, where are you going to go? I don't, we'll just go to a hotel and, you know, we don't really need three days. It's not like we're busy on Sunday. We, we were talking about this even before this happened yeah. because it's just so expensive, you know, to do that, to do that loft upstairs. That's a hundred grand. And it's wow. like, it's stupid. I can go to a beautiful hotel or we're not really opening new customers and, you know, we basically just seen existing customers. The shows have gotten much later and we get our samples now much earlier. So really by the time those shows come, it's much more of a social thing for us than a sales thing. Yeah. So we'll probably just go to a really nice hotel close by and have good food and drinks and do that, you know, and save $80,000. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> well, one, one good thing about that show this year is, uh, you know, you usually pay for it and, you know, kind of drain the bank account and then build it back up with the funds after the show. And, you know, it was kind of interesting having all that money in the bank. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It was. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bill, Bill and Patty, do you both do the designing or? No, Patty's the boss of the design <laughs> sector. Yeah. Well, Bill, Bill, at least you learned something in your old age. Yeah. <laughs> And, and what's Celeste do again? <laughs> I don't know. I just like Celeste <laughs> has to deal with me, which is a never-ending, unthankful job, believe me, Tony. <laughs> oh, God. And she's the head of all sales. It's a brutal job, actually. One that I'm glad I don't have. And where did you find this guy up in the, this guy with the glasses on up here? Isn't that great? Um, Let's talk about oh, Joe. He found me on the golf course. I was agreeing. Yeah, he was. Yeah. I I met Joe D when I was at Oliver Peoples. That's when I first met Joe. Oh, yeah. you were with Oakley, right, Joe? Yes. Yeah, yeah. For many years. And we were starting a new project called Mosley Tribes, and so we talked to Joe and yeah. you know, kind of got his advice on some stuff, and never actually hooked it up, but we uh, got to know him a little bit, and then he was good friends also with Tim Cadiente, who is our partner in Barton Prayer. and. Yeah. We got fortunate enough to bring him on board a few years back. So yeah. we we loved it. Joe's amazing. Super talent. So it's been fun. Good times, right? Yeah. It's been fun. I know. I've been working with Patty since Patty hired me at Oliver Peoples in 1997. So she's the one that brought me into the eyewear industry. It was so fun. I'll never forget when I interviewed with you. It was so fun. Yeah, wow. I learned, I've learned a lot. Gosh. How long have you been in the business, Jack? Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is well, going to be... <laughs> you know, I, I actually started... Um, I worked in the lab when I was going in... Uh, when I was in high school. <clears throat> it was a part-time uh -huh. job. And then I worked... Uh, I actually worked in lab uh, throughout my college days, part time, and uh, graduated with a psychology degree, which was brilliant, and had nothing to do other than join the family business. So that's what we did. Yeah. You know, so I, it has to be, I don't know, 1970, something like that. <laughs> 69. <laughs> wow. You know, forever. <laughs> that's a 15 year career man that's awesome a long time well wow. jack have you have you ever seen anything like this over the five generations of the urker family well it's kind of interesting um you know i said to somebody earlier that um you know our company survived the uh what was the flu back in the night or the spanish, spanish flu mm -hmm. and we uh, survived the Great Depression, and uh, um, another something else happened in eighteen late eighteen hundred something. So we we keep surviving, but this is a bitch. This one's a tough one. Yeah. But um, you know, I mean, we're going to be fine. But I have never seen a worldwide collapse yeah. of anything, 
and it just basically happened overnight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot to do with the internet and the media and, you know, information gets across the world pretty damn quick today. So, you know, there's no secrets. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think a lot of people overreacted, but, um, you know, I have my own ideas on it all, but, um, it's, it's just, it's, it's been devastating to small business, unfortunately. And, you know, I'm kind of interested in our, uh, our own industry <laughs> who survived it, you know, because I, I can't imagine all these little companies are going to be able to, whether they be retail or right. So I don't know how you guys hold it. It's going to be tough. I mean, I mean our, our retail is what's down 80, 80 some odd percent, you know, we had to lay off every half the staff and, yeah. and uh, you know, which was unfortunate, but everybody gets it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the problem is, is unemployment and that's trying to get them back now is, they're making more money on unemployment than they are working. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> so everybody wants to ride out their unemployment until they come back. And, and that's a little difficult for us trying to reopen, which we're trying to get open next week, uh, you know, full going at retail. So, yeah. you know, but well, you know, it, bringing the whole staff back right now doesn't make sense because the customers aren't coming in yet. Yeah. At least they're not coming in like they used to. I mean, you guys are in retail. I think. No, it's, yeah, we've only brought back one person per store, and we haven't brought back New York at all, so. Yeah, right, right. And we haven't paid rent. The only store we paid rent in is Aspen, because the city of Aspen contributed, and so, so we're only paying 30% of the rent in Aspen right now. Did you not get the PPP money? We did, um, but it, I, like you said, you know, we could bring people back, but what would they do, you know? Right. Because there's yeah. not... Even at the wholesale company, the problem is, you know, we're just not that busy right now. It's just not, you know, most of our customers weren't open or aren't taking their back orders or aren't paying or all of the above. Yeah, we, <laughs> you we know, got to say, obviously. You just got to really, you know, and the, and they're changing the rules on those loans daily. Actually, Robert not Fiddler and I had a discussion this morning. They already changed it again you know just sure. today so they don't really know and i think you know landlords don't know you know my landlord in new york's the largest one of the largest landlords in the united states it's called vernado and they have no they have no idea what to do because no one's paying them yeah right yeah they got a man that they have to take a hit wow uh, and i asked the you know i got to the owner of that company actually his name's jaime and he's a tough guy and but he's you know he's like Oh, we're going to help you out. And then I talked to my agent. He goes, well, free rent, would that help you? And I go, no. I said, we need a new lease. I go, if you want me to stay, I have to have a new lease. I go, yeah, I can have the store back, man, because I'm not sending you 40 grand a month anymore. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. And I go, what are your restaurants doing? And he goes, they all want to walk away. Yeah. Yeah. So New York's going to have to reset. You know, those landlords are going to have to make some hard decisions. Do they want some tenants or do they want a bunch of empty spaces? Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah, it will. But it's funny, Ed Biner was on, uh, Jack, we were talking uh, to Ed earlier today, and he said, no, we haven't paid any of our landlords. So Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he's in mostly malls, and all the malls are, well, I guess they're just starting to come back, but they've been completely shut down. Yeah, and he's in Orlando, which is, you know, that's a nightmare situation because the, you know, Disney's closed. and Right. So he's he's like, nope, no rent's being paid. Yeah. I heard someone told me that Warby Parker hasn't it told their landlords no rent until 2021. Wow. <laughs> <Dang>. <laughs> wow. It's interesting. But my, you know, all the people I've talked to, they just said, man, we'll, we'll get back to you. They don't know what to do. Right. You know, the Taubman Group, that's our Kansas City landlord. Now it's Simon, I guess. And then H.G. Hill in Nashville, they're just like, yeah, we'll get back to you. That's, I mean, we're in a couple malls and they're saying the same thing. And we're just going to let that lay until we uh, hear something. Yeah. yeah. And, and we're in the middle of building a store. Mm -hmm. Wow. Jeez. That's half built. 
Yeah, great timing on that one. <laughs> Is that the wall, dude? Well, maybe you can renegotiate yeah. the lease and get more build out money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> But we've been, you know, the good news is, is we've been busier this week for sure. You know, we opened up basically uh, this, was it this Monday or no, last yeah. Monday. Last Monday. And we, wholesale, uh, wholesale or retail? Wholesale. Wholesale. And we've been busy. You know, people have been ordering stuff, paying, taking their back orders. Um, you know, and I, for us, it's just readjusting and really having a new business plan going forward and saying, you know, this is the new reality and this is how we're going to make it work. And, get through it that way and kind of build it back. Hopefully, you know, by the end of this summer, hopefully it starts to look a little more normal. You know, that's what we're hoping, particularly in the retail stores. Um, we'll see, but it's, you know, Jack St. Our retail stores, we've been open like, except for New York, 10 days also. And, you know, it's not busy. <laughs> yeah, right. It's just not busy. No. Yeah, and you're, you're in some touristy areas, so you're not getting the tourist business either, so. Yeah, Aspen's in off-season, um, and we have a doctor in Aspen that's the only doctor in Aspen, which is kind of nice, so that helps a little bit, so we've done, and she was gone for two months. Her parents are in Florida, so she's mm -hmm. back, and she was busy, so, you know, just for <laughs> eye needs, you know, medical needs, she's the only optometrist in Aspen, so she's been pretty busy, um, so that's helped Aspen. But you know, going forward, there's no food festival in June. There's no music festival this summer in Aspen. Yeah. Um, United Airlines has cut almost all. I don't even know if they're going to be flying into Aspen this summer. So you know, it's going to be. It's not going to be. Awesome. They're going to be flying. Period. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Oh. Yeah. So uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, but we're planning on being at least fifty percent off for the summer in Aspen. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got on an airplane a couple of weeks ago, and I was one of six passengers on, uh, you know, really? eighty seats a plane. Yeah. Unbelievable. Crazy. Crazy. Have you had to um, sell other ways, like more online at all, or? I mean, we're look. You know, obviously, you want to push anything you can, and uh, we've done a lot. You know, communicating with the customers this way through Zoom and trying to get people, you know, excited. We brought out our new collection right before this happened. You know, so uh, the good news is we got all that inventory, and that's a good asset to have. <laughs> but the bad news is, you know, it's just hard to. It's right now. It's just still not started up really. You know, I'd say the economy is only. 30% back maybe if that mm -hmm. so you know it's just you just got to be patient with it it's definitely altered what what we're going to bring out over the next six months seven months we're not going to bring out obviously a whole new collection in September now um, right. so we're kind of altering you know the products that we bring out and being careful and making sure that you know keep your inventory because your inventory is what can bury you right so you got to keep that as tight as you can yeah and our factories have been very cool. They've been working with us, getting us the frames that we need and, you know, sending us what we are asking for. So, you know, if we have back orders on a certain SKU and they've got it made, they'll send it to us. And they've been pretty cool, considering I haven't sent them a lot. So <laughs> you know, that's been pretty helpful for us. Yeah. Mm. It's tough, man, you know, working with... It's tough in Japan, I think, for some of our manufacturers. It's been pretty brutal. Yeah. It all trickles down. <laughs> Keeps going around. But hopefully it surges back. That's right. We'll see how it shakes out. Yeah. Hey, Patty. Yeah. Um, I think it would be nice if you could share your design process with Jason. Yeah. I mean, it's really case by case. It's different. I mean, I work year round on it. I don't necessarily sit down at the beginning of a season and put together a mood board um, or say, okay, this season, my inspiration is nautical meets bohemian renaissance or anything like that. I just work year round on designs. And then um, when it comes down to the process of deciding on prototype 
I then edit what exactly I think that I'd like to see in a prototype versus just a physical drawing. And um, I send it to the factories for prototyping. I work with usually two to three different factories. Um, sometimes if I am not confident that one factory is gonna make it better than the other, I'll prototype it at both factories. And then when we get the prototype, decide. Um, but then once all the prototypes come in, we have a meeting with Bill, Celeste, Trisha, and a couple other people, and we lay out all the drawings and prototypes, and then we edit it down to what finally becomes the collection. And that's usually pretty brutal, for me anyways, you know, because I always, I mean, I love them all. I've edited it down to that point, but I start probably with about 250 drawings. Um, I work with a girl named Hiroko. She and I have worked together for about 19 years. She was with me at Oliver Peoples. And when we started Barton Prairie, she came on board shortly thereafter. Um, and that's basically it. Patty, you're freezing. <laughs> yeah, she's like. <laughs> Is she stuck? I keep getting a message on my screen that says your internet is unstable. So yeah, it says you're bad. Am I back? Okay. Yeah, you're back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my internet is not stable. It says on my screen. Oh. Okay. I'll just add a little bit to that, Jason, because Patty's incredible. She won't go there, but she's incredibly prolific in design. It's I've worked, you know, with other brands and other designers and you know no one designs the just the enormous amount of design um i think what what's your drawing number patty it's like yeah I, we're up in the almost eleven thousand. yeah wow. so, I mean, we, 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 we've only prototyped about five percent of what patty's design and a lot of times you know for design it just you know she'll design something super cool or it may not fit really for barton Pereira, and we're like you know so you just it's just, it's very prolific though. It's hard. Well, Patty, Patty, you just send us the other 5%, the next 5%. <laughs> 5%. Save I'm us a whole lot of work. Jack, once the check gets to me, then I send it to you. <laughs> yeah, I have, I have these bins in my office um, of all of the prototypes that don't make it. And so when I sit down with everybody at that final design meeting where we're editing the collection, a lot of times I will have laid out another you know besides the 50 to 60 prototypes that we've got for the collection i'll lay out another 100 to 150 prototypes that are things that i love that i think have a possible place in the collection and a lot of times uh we'll go back to drawings from 2012 or 2015 2017 and take those prototypes and they finally make it into the collection the timing of it is right for the market or you know it's it's something that's missing from the collection if it's a larger men's optical or a smaller women's optical or you know a class that we think is you know right for the market at the time so what influences the design though like is it is it media is it um what people are wearing like how do you um it's it comes from everywhere i mean um it could be from a piece of vintage jewelry or uh, a color of a ceramic or um, the lens colors, a lot of them come from Jamaica, the color of the water or the reflection of the sun on the water, um, the color of the flowers. Uh, I really, um, I look at a lot of cars and motorcycles, especially vintage for designing and stuff. That's how I came up with the kind of neuroline look that's on our logo plaque and a lot of our filigree. Um, so just, it comes from everywhere, you know? I, I see glasses and everything. It's kind of weird, you know? Um, it's, it just, it's just the way I look at things, you know? And I kind of, it's more, I think it's intuitive as well. I mean, not a professionally trained designer. I didn't go to college for design. I didn't go to college at all, but I mean, I didn't go for design specifically. So it's kind of something that's just been self-taught really. I mean, I worked really closely with Larry and Kenny and the Japanese factories for many years. 
Um, so I learned the technical aspects from them, but um, I've always really loved vintage. I, when I was a young girl, I wore a lot of vintage clothing and stuff, and I was always um, buying vintage sunglasses. Mm. And so I have a huge archive of vintage frames that I refer to for inspiration sometimes. And Jason, a lot of this stuff takes time, you know, so you might, Patty might be having our lens manufacturer develop a certain palette of lenses with specifics that we give them. And there's a lot of back and forth that may be more technical. Um, you know, some of the stuff we've done, like the 3D printing on lenses or the different, the triple tents that we did where the factory finally said, fuck you, we're never going to do that again. It's too hard. And, um, but it's all, everything's in a process. So as things become, become available and certain designs are more difficult. So, you know, and then Patty's always, you know, expanding the palette of colors that we use every, mm. uh, you know, every collection incorporates some new color in it for plastic or metal or texture. Um, so as you know, things aren't always available. So if we started working on one design, it was more technical, it might take a while for that to actually be able to come into the collection. So um, it's more based on can they make it? Can it, can it be done? And um, some frames are too, never get in. There's one men's sunglass that we bring out every year. And I, I swear to God, and we had our French rep in last time. Almost the last time. I know our French rep <laughs> saw it and he goes, oh my God. And I love this design, right? Mm -hmm. I, I have fought for it. And Philippe saw it and goes, oh, that has to be in the collection, right? And at the end of the day, it was the last one cut again. It just, that <laughs> poor frame. But so I feel, I feel like the, um, I feel All like right, some I'll of the- All right, I'll send you a check for $25, send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know how it does. <laughs> Jack, do you want to share how the design goes real quick for, for Urkers? Oh, you got to get my son Jack in here for that one. Oh, okay. Um, um, so I, I sense that like the 90s styles are coming back. Is that is that just me or? <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's been happening for a little while. I always refer to that as kind of like the Beverly Hills 90210, you know, oh. <laughs> the P3 smaller metals. Uh, interesting things like the lens. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, but there's like different kind of pockets. I think, you know, that's kind of been happening for I'm kind of um, you know, it's like the cycle kind of goes from really heavy and it starts going thin and it goes lighter and it goes to thick, heavy plastics again. Like you kind of see the evolution when you've been at it as long as we have. <laughs> um, and I think uh, that plastics are coming back, uh, in, for me anyway, that's what I'm on to now. And so, um, Right now, my focus has been more on acetate and how to make it look more interesting and special. Um, just because there's so much cheap plastic out there, and we really have to kind of separate ourselves in that way. Your bandwidth is very low, dear. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. I think, right. I'm the only one here there? on the internet, so. It's not, I don't have the less problem. This is, part, this is, this is why business has to get back to the way it was. So it's like, <laughs> uh, we're, we're doing well. I rock's doing well. I'm, I'm, I'm happy down here. Good. Yeah. I'm thankful. Yeah. You're doing a great job down there and, uh, awesome. and you keep selling stuff. So it's great. That's good. Do you guys have a big online business? What's up? Do you guys have a big online business? You know, we don't. Um, it's something we're starting to get back involved um, and focus on a little bit more since we've had time to do it. But, uh, you know, it's a tricky, it's a tricky business. Um, but, but we're going to start looking at it a little bit more and more, both for our own brands and as well as the retail stores. Yeah. But you guys, you guys walk that fine line too, being wholesale and 
right. in, in the internet online business and you know who you're supporting and who gets ticked off about it and, you know so <clears throat> so we're kind of walking a fine line with it also yeah it's right. a tough business online sales you got to spend money to make sales happen for sure yeah, right. yeah and it's yeah. something we're learning and and at the end of the day if you're not making any money you know how much is it worth it i guess and then mm -hmm. if we're not selling our own brand and we're selling you know let's say your brand for workers you know it just to me i don't see the value as much as coming into the store and, and buying it but we're exploring yes there's a, a website um that i ended up on yesterday you know how you get online and you just end up going down this black hole um but it was uh one of those ones where you can upload a picture and then it kind of scans your face and you can try frames on have yeah. you guys tried that and so i chose they, this particular website sold barton Pereira and they had the marquee so i thought i went to barton Pereira, i chose the marquee and i did the scan and took the picture of myself it uploaded the frame so that it, so that I could see how it looked me, but also how well it fit. It didn't fit anything like the real thing. It looked like it was super huge on my face. So, mm -hmm. and the frame is not big on me. So I, I don't know those, you know, online face things. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's difficult. Difficult. It's difficult. And, it, and you know, it, there's so many different things that go into fit. And, you know, it's kind of what we specialize in. and and whether it's a weight or how it sits on your bridge or behind the ear or just you know all these different things that go into a pair of glasses especially when you're spending more than a, a zenny six dollars and 95 cent frame where it, it, it matters a little bit more so you yeah know, it's, you know to me online exists for somebody maybe bought a frame at some store and they lost it and they just want to replace it and they already know how it fits and feels and all that stuff and, and it's a convenience factor so that's that's more of where our intention right. is selling online and selling somebody that maybe somebody bought a Barton Prayer from us and then they can just go buy it online again because they've already they already they've already done the work. Mm -hmm. So it's more about supporting the customer, not necessarily expanding. It's the convenience factor is what it becomes. Yeah, price is a big deal too. When you get up to five hundred dollars, yeah. there's less of an audience for sure online. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, there, there's I, also like, um, I don't know what the numbers are, but, you know, after you've been in a store for so many years, you start seeing this, you know, that you have a trust and relationship with a lot of people. Like I've met, you know, I've worked with so many different customers and they, they trust you. They're like, you know, you know, where's, uh, where's Jason today? Oh, he's off. Oh, oh, okay. I'll come back. You know, so you build that trust. And I think that's really important for retail stores. So like, um, they'll, they'll come back and they trust you to style them that way. And, yeah it's interesting because you look at retail as a whole and i think the service genre particularly bigger stores department stores suffers but when you yeah. look at the independent eyewear opticians out there it, it's a very good experience for the most part you know most of our customers still offer really top level service you know it's very social it's a it's a great experience where most you know, people say, oh, retail's over. Well, retail's over because most of it is terrible. You know, you yeah, go, yeah. we have a store in Nashville. I told the girls that are partners in our store there, and I said, you can walk up and down the street. You won't find one good salesperson because it's just, it's a bad experience for the most part when you go in those stores. But I think that's what's unique about eyewear and the optical industry. I think still a lot of very good experiences out there where people are, you know, self-owned or, you know, real passionate about what they do. So. Mm -hmm. I don't think you've, like even clothing far and few between today there's just not very many independent clothing boutiques that are really great you know right. so. mm -hmm. is it true once you get into eyewear you can't get back out I'm like dang it's been 13 years already for me right? <laughs> now, go, ahead, go ahead and try it you'll be back in six months <laughs> <laughs> Can't leave. I told oh, Patty, I maybe give you two years at all of her people's. They wanted, I'm like, oh, that sounds so long. And now it's been 23 years. Jesus, it's crazy. Yeah. Can't leave it. Yeah. <laughs> 
So what are the plans going? Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just going to put it out there. So what are the plans, you know, this week? What are you seeing positively this week for whether wholesale, retail? What do you think? Like what's? It's been great talking to the customers. I mean, Celeste can add to it too because she's been talking to more than yeah. I have. But I, people are pretty, you know, they're first of all, they've been really gracious and, and great when they call our office. People aren't calling and bitching or complaining. We've been, our customers have been amazing that way. And, you know, they're telling, oh, we sold some frames. You know, I think people, you know, it's kind of starting over. You know, it's kind of like you're back to square one. And people are trying to be very positive. And, They've been great. You know, that's been the best part, I think, for me is our customers have really, you know, been working with us and we've been trying to work with them. Um, so that's very positive. And I think, you know, it's not going to come back all at once. But I think, you know, with that kind of approach, a more solution positive driven approach, people can find ways back and, and get it going again. But people, we talked to Tina in Houston, our account there, I gallery what was her biggest day ever, you know, yeah. yesterday. Yeah. She was so happy. And then, you know, another account Trish was talking to in South Carolina and they were all fired up and excited to get back to work. So, you know, make, when you speak to people, it makes you feel a little bit better, you know, because it's, yeah, no it's daunting. It is a little scary when you're an owner and, you know, your bank is shit ton of money and, <laughs> and the yeah. You know, they're, you know, it's, it's all daunting, but I think those positive things keep you going in the right direction. Yeah. That's why I think the, it's important to touch base with the, who's in the store and who's on the whole, just kind of like, all right, what's happening. You know what, you know, I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Great. Well, guys, it was uh -oh. nice We're stuck. catching up with you, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Guys, yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. Like, are yeah, you nice to see you guys? Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you. I know. Jason, nice Thanks to meet you. Thanks for everything, you guys. Tony, Jack, you guys look good. Yeah. You do. Too. You guys all look great. We're all still alive. That's all that matters. We're all still alive. Sure. <laughs> how we look. Live. How's, Joe, how's Joe you're looking. How's Sandy doing? <laughs> What's that? How's Sandy doing? Sandy. Sandy's good. He's, you know, she's wanting to come back to work, and I got to keep telling her to just take it easy. You know, I'm like, hey, oh. Jason, I thought Sandy was going to be on this little meeting. Uh, Lauren couldn't get it together. <laughs> oh, nice. So Sandy just, he just, Sandy just turned uh, 84 years old, and we she, love her. She's ready to get she's back awesome. at. Her. Yeah. She, oh, yeah, I, I tried I tried really hard to get her on this, but uh it just didn't yeah, you know, she would have loved to meet you guys. Well now now that we have this uh group all together, I've asked each of you individually, but uh I'd like a consensus. Um what exactly are you paying Sandy a month? <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, Sandy. He loves Barton Her. Yeah. Oh my God! It's, it's all Joe. No, it's, it's Joe. I, like, I I thought she'd be on here because she just cannot wait to meet you, Patty. And she is a machine. She's a sewing Burton Pereira machine. Patty yeah. needs to come out and do a trunk show. Yep. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can't, get, we can't even get Celeste out. What makes you think we can? I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I came out there once or twice. <laughs> Well, it's because it's in December in St. Louis. Well, let's go to when everybody's back. No, I want to yeah. go again. Yeah, no, I not in December. I know. You do it in the, in the fall. Like spring. Yeah, we'll do it in the fall. Yeah, we'll do a big one. Okay. You know, every, you know how you have, we have it on the same Saturday yeah. every year, so I, I don't want to jinx it. I'm one of those guys where right. if you move it, all of a sudden we'll the whole thing up. And Celeste will come out for a, you know, two pair sale and that's all it'll be or something. <laughs> <laughs> first, oh, jinx it. first Saturday in, in uh, December. It's been great. Yeah. yeah. It's, no, I it's been successful for I don't know how many years. So I don't yeah. know. If I would... All right. Well, maybe I'll get out there this year oh. since I'm not going to art that. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah, I just go to Kansas City and then come over to St. Louis. There you go. Okay. 
Jason, Jack, and Tony, uh, we thank you. It's it's always a pleasure, and it's so great to see you guys. Yeah, yeah. And, we appreciate all the continued support, guys, for sure. Yeah, which, which we could be giving you more the last couple of months, but you you got the same percentage as you got in the past. <laughs> that's good. No, that's good. Uh, hang in there, and and can't wait to see you guys, and we'll get this. We'll get this thing rolling again. So, but all let right. us know whatever I can do to to be of help, and we're all here for you. So. Yeah, if you want to jump on any meetings, just let us know. We're around. So awesome. All right. Great. Sounds good. Great. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bill and Celeste and Patty. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Good Thanks, seeing you, man. Bye. Thank you so much. Take all care. Right. Bye. 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 Take care. All right. Bye. 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 <laughs> How do you get off now? I don't.